Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of Afterword Plus modding tutorials and in this one I'm gonna teach you how we can actually alter enemy AI and add some contributions to it. This model was taken from the official blog post which was posted quite some time ago but this is supposed to be the official way of doing things so that's why I'm maybe showcasing it in front of some other things. Let's see what we can learn from it. So the first line here is just registering the mod like we've done before. Basically we just register the mod, we supply the name and the only thing I change in this code from the reference code is that I added this one and that one is the version number depending on which update we have. In this case it's just one because it's still rather early, it's still only the second day after the DLC has come out. Uh, so so it's just one and of course with every update this number changes and then the mod makers will have to update it and see if things are different. Uh, and we just save this reference or the, the, the register of the mod to the local variable pooping mod. And then we add the first function or the only function which serves as an MPC update and obviously this is our main function where, we'll, where we will be performing these changes. And you can see that some things are different in the sense that we have a parameter here and that's really unusual and I'll show you why this parameter is useful in the next example but for now just imagine that basically every time we add a callback, in this case when we add the callback to entity monstro, we are saying that basically every time an NPC update happens, which is basically every time monstro decides to do something, we are calling this function and every time this function is called because it's tied to entity monstro, basically whichever entity has called this NPC update function will also be getting this NPC as parameter, which means that every time monstro calls it, you can imagine that NPC will be just monstro and because we only tie this callback to one entity, so just monstro, you can imagine that this is actually monstro. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit confusing but I promise it'll make a lot more sense in, in the next example but for now just imagine that NPC is monstro. So the first thing we do is we check if NPC, so if his state is in state idle and again in the next example I'll show you how you can actually check in which states the enemies are but for now I'm just trying to demonstrate how we can actually alter the AI. So first of all we check if Monstro is in an idle state meaning he's not doing anything and then we roll a dice, a five sided dice and if it's a one which means 20% chance then we change his state to our new state which we call NPC state state attack 2. Alright, so the next frame which happens, we check if we are in the state attack 2 and if we are then we actually start executing our code. So what happens inside of when we actually roll a dice, so when there's 20% chance of this attack happening whenever monstro is in an idle state, uh, we check if or, or maybe uh, rather said there's a state frame which means how many frames has passed since we actually entered this state attack 2 and there's only a set amount of frames you can do but basically what we're doing here which we are checking if that number is divisible by five and every frame that happens we're incrementing it by one so basically every time every time we go into state state attack two frame it means that we have entered a new state and we are incrementing that by one every time this function is called and at the end when the NPC state frame is over 30 we're basically saying okay now we've exited now we've stopped performing this attack too, we've stopped pooping, let's change back the state to the idle state and just reset the state frame to zero. So in this case you have to kind of take care of this of yourself so you know you don't get stuck in that infinite loop of just him doing the same attack over and over again, you have to reset it somewhere. Um, I, I obviously missed the most important part but I think it was important for me to explain the state frame before. But because the state frame increases by one every single frame, uh, while we are in this state, first we check if that number is divisible by 5 and if it is divisible by 5, which means you know that the 0th state and the 5th state and the 10th state and the 15th state and if that is then what we'll do, first of all we'll get the position of the nearest free space and we can use that by using the function isaac.getFreeNearPosition so what we do, basically this function gives you the first free space near the position that you provided. So obviously because Monstro is pooping underneath him we supply the position as Monstro and then this function what it does it searches for a free position near it and the second parameter I believe is the distance around that position although don't quote me on that because I would have to check but what's important is that this function actually uh, finds the first free near space around the position we provided and when we find that position what we do then is use the Isaac grid spawn which means that on that particular grid we are spawning something and in this case we're spawning the poop which is the grid entity type dot grid poop 
uh, at, posi at the position and then of course there's there's some other parameters which we'll have to check in the documentation to really make sure. But what's important here is that we're basically spawning poop at that position and I want to showcase you this in the game and then when I come back I'll go to the second example and, I, and then I'll actually show you how these things look like in the documentation how we can maybe figure these things out ourselves. Welcome to the game and the first thing we'll do is we'll spawn Monstro because obviously we made some changes to Monstro and we want to see if this, those changes apply. So what we'll do is we'll spawn him and he has the code of 20.0. Again, what you could do is just write his name out, uh, but I prefer using code because I, I think it's less ambiguous so the program or the console can get confused. What we're on the lookout for is basically when he's in an idle state, we'll just see if he actually lets some poops out near him. Okay, now the monster is here. Apparently, we spawned champion monster, which I didn't really wasn't really sure that can happen. And we can see that it works, you know, because we're basically applied this to every monster entity and not just one particular monster. It also works on champion variant and also monster two if that is a variant of monster. I'm not sure, but basically, it works on every monster variant. And you can see basically what happens is uh, we can also d set the debug eleven, uh, not eleven, but but a debug tree to give us infinite HP, which means we can just move around the room. So you can see basically every time they're in an idle state, there's a chance that they will let some poops out. And obviously this is what we were after. And this is exactly how this mod works. So that's great. But obviously there was a lot of guesswork involved in the sense that we didn't really know what the states were and what the frames were. We didn't really know how to check that in the documentation. So let's jump in the second example where I'll teach you or hope to teach you how you can actually look those things up for yourself. Welcome to the second example and in this one I'm going to teach you how we can actually learn and read states and then maybe do something with them. So the first thing you see here is that we have a bunch of commented code but don't worry about the green code because at this point this isn't even applicable. The important part is that we basically have the same premise as before. We have the function called hopper mod and then again the function npc update and we basically tie that function to our npc update function and then we just add to the entity hopper which means that basically whenever entity the hopper exists this function is going to be called every time an npc update happens and what we're going to do is we'll just set our debug text to the state of that npc and at this point we don't really know what that means but let's just hop in game and i'll show you what, what these numbers are Okay, now that we're in the game, the first thing you see is that debug stacks on the screen and now it's zero because obviously there are no hoppers inside so nothing is calling the function to actually change the debug text. The first thing we're going to do is spawn a hopper because obviously we tied our code to the hopper, we just want to see what happens. Okay, when we spawn the hopper, you can see that the number begins to change. Basically, every time hopper is idle, even just for half a second, that number is 3, and every time he moves, that number is 4. So for now, we don't really know what to do with these numbers, but it seems to indicate in which state the hopper is in. So hopper, in this case, is just in state 3 and 4, whatever that means. Basically, whenever he moves, he's in 4, and whenever he's idle, even for a second, he's in state 3. Let's go to the documentation, and I'll show you how we can actually decode what, what these states mean. Okay, now that we saw those numbers, we just have to figure out what they mean. So if you go to the documentation here and find the NPC state enum enumeration for NPC states, we, we can basically check what the 4 and 3 means while we were in the game. So if you just go by, you can see that there's a lot of states. You can say state initialization, state appear, state suicide, state unique that, etc. But what we're interested in is the ones with 4 and 3. And you can see that the 4 that we saw in the game is state move, so basically whenever Hopper moved he was in state move, and whenever he was AFK or just not moving, he was in state idle, which is indicated by the tree here. So that means that Hopper was either in state move or state idle, and now that we know this, we can actually apply that in our code and do something and maybe change his pattern somewhat. I had a little bit of fun and what I did is basically wrote this if statement and what it checks is basically if our NPC state is an, an NPC state move so because we checked in the game that NPC state move is the, 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 the state that Hopper is in when he moves and that sounds a bit confusing you know but, but for the sake of the argument just, just go along with me. Um, so whenever he is in state move and basically whenever we get the NPC and Hopper an NPC update happens and then we can check if he's in a particular state. Of course, we don't we don't have to check the state move. We could also check check the state idle or even unique that if you wanted to know what if you wanted to do something else. But in this case, I just said whenever Hopper is moving, I want to do something. 
Okay, so what I did, I just had a little bit of fun and I just went under uh, under a few functions and what I did, first of all, I got the room. This is basically the room we are currently in and you can get that by saying game parenthesis colon get room parenthesis and, and that's it. And then you basically save that in a variable called the room. And then what you can do when you're in the room, you can basically emit blood from walls, which is a very scary proposition, but, but it's really fun when you're in the game. Uh, and another thing I did is just darken the game, and that's the darkness effect that maybe you, when you're fighting the adver adversary uh, you, you see. And it's quite annoying, but you know, for the sake of the experiment, I think it's very visual and I think it'll help explain my point just a little bit better. So not, well, now what do we expect? Basically, anytime we spawn a hopper and he moves, we can expect the game to, to change, you know, we get blood from walls and the, the game to darken and things like that. And I just found these functions, if you go under classes again, you have the game class and you also have the room class. So the game class allows you to, to where's the game class? I lost it, there it is. The game class allows you to get the room and you can obviously do that like I did in the code and I explained it. And then the room class allows you or just has a bunch of functions. You know, you have, uh, you can get the grid for whatever reason, if you want to do something there, you can get how many enemies are left alive. Uh, you can split blood from walls, you can play the music, you can basically, uh, remove doors if you want to, you can add doors, you can add pads and things like that. And the game again class has also a bunch of functions which you can use. You can get uh, at which grid wave you are if maybe you're in grid mode. You can, guess, you can get how much darkness there is in the room and maybe depending on that you can do something. Uh, you, can, you can add hallucinations, whatever that is, and I'm not really sure in this case. But, but you know, there's a lot of things here and if you go into documentation and you know, now that you know how to access that class and that those particular rooms, you can actually start playing around with it. Uh, so let's jump into the game and see how, if this works. Now that we're back in the game, you can see that I haven't restarted it or anything. What we'll use is our Lua mod command to actually update the script we just wrote. So I just uncommented it. I say Lua mod AI. AI is the name of my mod in this case. And when I do that and go back, you can see every time Hopper moves, there's blood coming out of the walls and, and the whole room turns dark. So that's great. You know, that that's probably the most uneventful mod. It looks pretty scary and cool, but at the same time, you know, it's it's not anything spectacular. Obviously, you can do a lot more things with it. Uh, you can spawn coins at certain points. You can close the rooms whenever an enemy does something. Uh, what you can do or what I saw someone do is every time Isaac dies, uh, you can drop a trinket. So if you have the left hand, for example, before going to the chest, every time you kill Isaac, if you have that trinket, you just drop it. So someone made an out of left hand dropper, which I thought was a very novel idea. Uh, but I wanted to showcase you one more thing before I, we actually wrap this up. So you saw that the hopper mod works. Basically, every time the hopper moves or jumps, however you want to call it, we emit blood from walls and we darken the game. But there is one more thing we can do with this particular function that I want to showcase. If you add another callback and just tie it to a different entity, so in this case what we did is basically we just copied it, we just changed the entity type we apply it to, and in this case we just applied it to entity monstro because we met him before and obviously we all like monstro to at least to some degree. And basically every time an NPC update happens on entity monstro, this function is also going to get called. The only thing that will be different is that this NPC now is not going to be a hopper, but it's going to be a monstro. And everything else will still apply, basically this code will still work. We'll see the debug text of the state of monstro in this case, if we spawn a monstro, and we'll get the state of or basically whenever monstro is moving or whenever he's in state move, the, the room is also gonna darken. So let's jump into the game and I'm gonna showcase you this as well. Now that I've applied the changes to the code, let's spawn monstro and see what, what is different. So let's just spawn monstro and his code is 20.0. And now we can see that the, the left, the debug text is actually showing his states. So whenever he jumps, he's in state seven, whenever he lands or vomits, he's in state eight, uh, and whenever he's idle, he's in state three. But basically whenever he enters the state move, which is when he jumps around a little bit, he's in state four. And that is exactly when the blood is coming off the walls and when the room darkens, which is quite an exciting proposition because you can imagine that you can do quite a lot of things with this. Um, but, but yeah, I just wanted to showcase you how you can actually apply the AI of enemies and how maybe you can add new attacks, uh, at least to some degree. You can't really change the padding from what I found, or maybe I just don't know how to yet, but I hope that this will be a good template to go forward. So this wraps up this video and I hope you can see just how powerful having the access to those state AIs is because you can really do a lot of things with it. I just can't wait for this to actually develop and we can explore more things and then of course some updates will happen and then we get maybe a little bit of a better documentation and then we can really start doing some crazy things. At this point I think this is basically everything that I've covered is 
all of the examples that we had. Um, there, there are some other ideas. I had a lot of questions on how to add familiars, but at this point, you know, the more I looked through the code and the more I tested it, I just can't figure it out for the hell of me. And there are no other examples online and nobody else has figured it out, or at least if they have figured it out, they haven't shared it with the world. And I'm not really sure how to go about a lot of things, but like I said, with time, it is only the second day, you know, and I've actually made four videos already, which is quite ridiculous, but it is only the second day and I can imagine a lot of functionalities aren't even there yet, you know, I'm, I bet certain things aren't implemented yet, but you know, some things we're probably just missing and I can't wait for us to actually discover it and obviously with the help of the developers eventually we're gonna be able to make really really awesome mods and I can't wait to get back to you with that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.